but still 13 with Alan Kilshaw. I had a Sunday's Championship fixture with Bradford Bulls. Uh, first off, I'll just go back to last weekend. It was an impressive performance. Um, how have the lads pulled up? Any injuries or anything to be concerned with? No, mate. Um, probably don't feel them bumps and bruises as much after a win, especially a, a win as, as, uh, as good as that was. Uh, Chris Riley had just that calf issue last week, but he's pulled up sweet this week and um, they're all better off for the run and obviously we can't change the, the, the side and we wouldn't have uh, made any changes if, if everyone was fit and that's the case, so we'll go in with the, with the, with the same lads and um, we're looking forward to the challenge of, of Bradford tomorrow. And have you sort of had a chance to go back and, and watch the game again and, and, and pick it apart like you do? Yeah, you know it was it was good, and you know from myself smiling a lot. A lot of things we've done, we did a lot of things that we practiced. Um, you know, I still believe we had a dip ten minutes either side of half time. Um, we need to play for the full eighty minutes, but it was a pretty impressive uh, round one performance. And um, you know, against a, a good side and a side that's done well in the championship consistently. And then you know you, you throw in those four full time players at Wakefield as well, so it makes it even more impressive. And, the challenge this week is to back that up and be consistent, and, and to do it away from home. Um, you know, those are the challenges this week, and, and you know, with a 48-hour rule, and after Tuesday's review, we, we were on to um, you know Bradford and focusing on Bradford. And it's important we don't read too much press this week and, and fall in love with ourselves because it's only two points at the end of the day, and we need to make sure we uh, replicate that desire and enthusiasm that we um, that we showed last week. And yeah, it is Bradford on Sunday. We'll 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 head to Odsall for the first time in a, in a long time. Um, have you had a chance to, to sort of watch out how they performed against Hull KR last week? Yeah, I think they've they've improved since I think they played Huddersfield and Keithley and then Hull KR and they showed you know they showed in that Hull KR game that um, you know it was a tough game playing full time team Hull KR big crowd there and they were well up for it and you know Bradford scored first and they did some good things and I'm sure they'll they'll. Be They'll have improved this week and done a bit more on, on the training pitch. So we're expecting a um, you know, much improved Bradford side from the one against Hull KR because, like I said, they've improved every week and they've got some players in their team you know, who have played at the highest level and they've got some players in the team who will probably go on and play at the highest level. So we know how difficult the task is going to be, um, but we're more focused on us and, and making sure we're consistent um, and we improve on last week ourselves. And all eyes have been on Bradford since probably the end of last season, right through up until January, when eventually they, they, they went under. Um, it's been messy, there's been a lot of players sort of left in the lurch there. Do you sort of have, have much sympathy for them, the players and the staff and, and, and the club that it's been run? Mate, I've got no sympathy for, for, for Bradford now. You know, they're a full time team, they've got full time staff, they've got an ex NRL coach. Um, my sympathy is probably. With the players around Christmas, sympathies with like Rowan Smith who, who brought his family over. Um, but you know the current Bradford no, sympathy probably lies more with Workington and Whitehaven who, who stuck to the budget last year and went down. And, and those guys who took pay cuts and probably can't have as good a holiday they had last year. That's who the sympathies with. But we're, we're not we're not sympathetic of this current Bradford team uh, and the players. Like I say, they're full time and they're, they're still in the championship and and, and they've got an ex NRL coach. So. We're more focused on us and, 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 and making our club better. Um, probably quite a lot of people are bored with the Bradford situation now and we just want them to kick on. And We do need a, a strong Bradford, like we need a strong Rochdale, a strong Oldham, a strong Swinton. Um, and it's important that, that all these clubs are, um, you know, are strong for, for, the, for the good of the game. And yeah, you, just, you talked about it then, the, the ex-NRL coach in, in Jeff Tuve. Um, Nobody's really clear about what's what's sort of happening there. He's over on, I think it's a, a holiday visa, and but he's been named the coach. Is he going to have much impact? I don't know. What's your take on that? Mate, I didn't know um, Bradford was such a good holiday destination, especially for um, someone who's used to living on the uh, northern beaches of Manly. But I'm sure um, when he's allowed or if he's allowed, Jeff will have a, a, go a good... Um, impact on that side. He's, he's come through the Manly system with you know playing there and under Des Hasler, and then he actually took Manly to a grand final himself. So I'm sure he'll make some subtle changes off the field and and improve them, and they'll get better. You know, as the season goes on, and uh, when and if he's um, announced as coach officially, um, I'm, I'm sure he'll be um, good value. You know, with with the media and, and for the image and and the uh, interest in the in, in rugby league and rugby league in Bradford. 
Yeah, um, sort of Rochdale Hornets have found themselves in quite an unusual position um, going into the game. After one game, granted, it, we are top top of the table, um, sort of in the world of the bookmakers. Do, do you think we'll be sort of the favourites going into the game on Sunday? Oh, look, we don't really look at, at things like that, but I, I'd say we're not favourites for the weekend. It's at Odsall. Again, they're a full-time team, we're part-time. Our lads were up and down ladders yesterday and working in factories and, um, you know, labouring and, and, and laying grass, whatever they do. And, and, and Bradford probably were, might have had a day off and coming for a team run today. So they're full-time, they've got the, the, the chance to recover and, and prepare more hours than, than us. So um, I'd say they're the favourites for this game. Uh, it being an odd so as well, but we've got a young group, a, a, a group with no fear, and and we'll go we'll go tomorrow with odd uh, at odd so with, with with that mindset. We don't fear anyone in this competition, and um, we go week to week, and um, we'll, we'll go and look to to get the two points. And just looking at the month as a whole, on paper it was quite a challenging start. Dewsbury, Bradford, Hulke, and then Halifax, um, sort of. Before the season started, what, what were your targets? What were you hoping to get out of this, this opening, tough opening month? Oh, just that old cliche, mate. We do take it week to week. We're on process. Um, you know, you, you're never quite sure. Your pre season goes well, you're never quite sure, you know, until you get into that first game. But we've set a, uh, the bar quite high now, and we've got to make sure that that's our minimum um, standard of, of performance and, and try and improve every week. And we're just good to have the two points on the board, and, and, and we'll go week to week. Um, Hopefully we'll have four points on the board come come five five thirty tomorrow evening. Cheers, Alan. Thanks, Luke.